Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you watched my last tutorial where I provided a quick introduction to genetic algorithms and promised to show you this video where we are going to see how uh, evolution is cool using Python. And uh, that's exactly what we are going to do. And the series of these videos uh, are designed to make sure we understand these genetic algorithms. And again, uh, if you want to be notified of the ones upcoming in future, it's better if you subscribe to my channel and you know how to find the subscribe button. Pause right now, in fact. Hit the subscribe button. And then again, there's a little thanks button that's kind of new. Uh, go ahead and hit it if you're feeling extra generous. Okay, now. The camouflage simulation is, uh, uh, let's go ahead and use the genetic algorithm for this camouflage simulation. And uh, now what are we talking about? Well, in the last video, I mentioned about how you have a population and then you have a fitness function and you go ahead and perform like a selection based on the fitness function, maybe the top two individuals and then crossover mutation and so on. Uh, if not, go ahead and watch that video because that lays the foundation for all the future videos also that I'm going to do on this specific topic. So in general, these gem uh, genetic algorithms, they simulate the evolution of natural selection. And that's what we are trying to do in this video to see, visually see how that actually happens. And camouflage, obviously, as you know, is a common adaptation that helps uh, animals, uh, everyone to blend into their own uh, environment. Uh, of course, to avoid predators and all predators and also, yeah, that's primarily, I think, from an evolution point of view. You want to survive, you want to live. And uh, let's say that organisms uh, like insects can be represented as a string of genes. They can be like this binary number strings. And uh, that can represent like each of these can represent different visual features. Maybe it can be color, shape, texture. In our example, we're going to just use color and see how we, uh, the genetic algorithm wants this to be blending into the, the uh, environment. Again, because the fitness function we are going to define is exactly that. Hey, I want to be camouflaged against the background so I don't stand out when, it, uh, when a lion shows up. Yeah, And a fitness score is used to evaluate the individual's ability to blend in. In this case, the fitness score is nothing but, hey, my gray level compared to the background gray level. If it's the same, then I'm blending in, right? If it's very different, then I am not blending in. Then that's not a good camouflage. That's as simple in this specific example. Again, for others, you'll have other fitness function, which we'll see in our upcoming videos. And higher fitness scores are selected for reproduction, passing on to the genes to the next generation. And over time, the population evolves and becomes better adapted to the environment. So uh, let's watch this one more time. As you can see on the left hand side, this represents, let's say, a, a uh, an animal in Africa where you have like a yellowish background. And on the right hand side, this can be a small bug uh, sitting on a leaf. Right. So that bug wants to be green for best survival. Otherwise, the birds can pick them up. Same thing with animals here. So they don't get caught, uh, uh, you know, by a lion or something. So initially, let's say our population, because it's random, has all types of colors. But what happens to the population? You see more and more on the left hand side are kind of blending into the background color. Same with the right hand side. This is nature. This is evolution. I hope you all believe in this. <laughs> uh, this is there is there is a science behind it, right? So why uh, the evolution happens? Okay, let's not get into all that discussion. Let's actually jump into our Python notebook and walk and I'll walk you through the code there. And this is a collab notebook. I'm going to share this with you. Am I connected? Yeah, looks like I'm connected right there. We do not need GPU or anything, so don't change the runtime to GPU. And I am going to share this. Uh, uh, file with you so look for the link down under uh, in the description and i added all the necessary text that you saw in the presentation earlier and uh, in addition to that i mean basically here i talk about okay what what does this code do right so first thing first you calculate the fitness and in our case the fitness is uh, the fitness function is just looking at as you can see here mean and absolute right so it takes the absolute difference between the current color and the background or the, whatever the target color is, and then it calculates the mean. What, what do I mean by mean? Well, we are representing color by RGB. So here is an example. I, we'll get to that in a second. So uh, you calculate the fitness, 
evaluate the population, and then you simulate it. So this is the loop that we are going to run. And uh, we can do this for 50 iterations or 50 generations, if you want to call that. And we are going to use a population size of 100 in our example. And mutation is, again, these random changes. And uh, let's keep mutation rate to low, like 0.01, 1%. That's not bad. And 10% of the population being selected as elites meaning you have 100 uh, total numbers in the population, members in the population, and then let's take 10% of them as elites. And of those 10%, we are going to calculate the fitness and then uh, crossover and then the mutation and all that stuff. Okay, uh, and hopefully things make sense when we walk through the code. I hope you can see the code. Let me zoom in. I don't want them to be too gigantic, but at the same time, I want to make sure even if you're watching this on a phone, you should be able to read the code. Okay, so uh, no fancy libraries. All we are doing is importing our random NumPy and matplotlib. So nothing to install here. So keep it simple. And now I want to just want to make sure, okay, this is our objective function. What, why is that an objective function? Because the first values, I don't know, 250, 0, and 10, this is the color that I currently have. And I want my target color is this one. I want to blend into this color how far am I from my 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 uh, target color? Well, 250 minus 255 is what? 5, 0 minus 0, 10 minus 0 is 10. So 10 plus 5, 15 divided by 3, because I have three values here, is 5. So this is should be basically 5. My mean absolute, I mean, I'm explaining basics, but you can see. If my uh, color right there is 50, I'm very much off. And this is, I don't know, 50, 10. I'm very much off for, from the target. So this value will be very high, very large. And when I compare this 88 against five, uh, then, then the nature tells me that, hey, I should be uh, a, the lower value. So go back to your previous value, right? So that's exactly what uh, needs to be. So I'm leaving that over there. So now, from now on, let's define a few functions and then apply it at the end. So first thing first, calculate fitness function. We just looked at that. All it's doing, there's nothing in here other than other than the doc string. The only thing that uh, that this function is repeat. Uh, let me catch my breath a bit. The only thing this function is returning is the mean absolute value. So let's go ahead and run this. And now let's evolve the population. What does evolve actually mean? First thing, I am providing the population as a bunch of RGB values. How many? One hundred of them. Yeah. Uh, well any number you want, but I'm going to provide 100 of these RGB values. And then I provide one target RGB value, which I guess in this example I showed you, 25500. Yeah, so that's my uh, target RGB value. And then I define a mutation rate. It can be 1%, like I just mentioned earlier. Elite ratio is 10%. Again, we already talked about it. So that's what's going into this algorithm. And now let's see what happens. First thing first, it calculates the fitness for each chromosome because as soon as the population is there, it's calculating the fitness. And fitness is nothing, you, you know exactly what fitness is, uh, the mean uh, absolute value. So it calculates the fitness and then it takes 10% of those as the elites here. Yeah. So select the chromosomes with the best fitness values as elites. How many? In our case, we are defining it as 10%. So it takes 10% of these as elites. And now we have an elite population. 10 of them in this example, if you have uh, start with 100. Now, we are creating a new population by mating these elites. Right? This is like the royal family. Hey, these are the elites. And you mate kind of within these elites. And then you may end up with some weird uh, kids in real life because diversity is very important, but uh, that's exactly what's going on here, right? So we are actually taking uh, the elites and we are creating a new population by doing something with these elites. What are we doing with these elites? Well, while we are still working with this population, go ahead and randomly pick two of the elites. So we have two elites, parent one and parent two. Parent one can be RGB values of uh, 50, 100, and 20. Parent two can be RGB values of something else, right? So these are, in our example, these are RGB values. We are not even using binary encoding and, and anything in this tutorial or in this exercise. Okay, now let's create a child chromosome. How are we going to do the child chromosome? By combining the genes of the parents. 
So the child has the same uh, shape as the as the uh, parent in terms of NumPy array, and then we are basically saying, okay, uh, just uh, just use a random number. If that random number is less than 0.5, like between zero and 0.5, then uh, uh, take the parent one, uh, ith value. If not, just take the parent two. It's basically you're creating a child by combining uh, parent one and parent two. And once the child is created by crossover, this is all we're trying to do here is crossover, right? So once you do that, then we are just doing some sort of a mutation, a random mutation. And how do we do a random mutation? Hey, once you have the child, now go ahead and generate a random. And if that random is less than the mutation rate, because our mutation rate is 0 0.01, right? So if that is less than that value, which is very rarely, then go ahead and replace the ith value in the child with some random number between 0 to 256, because that's what our ray levels are, 0 to 256. And now we have a new population. Go ahead and depend and go ahead and return it. That's it. Very simple way of understanding how these genetic algorithms actually work. And now we are all ready to simulate it. Simulate means we have to generate the population. We have to do all kinds of stuff, right? So that's the that's what is happening here. So again, very similar inputs, except here we added another input called uh, size. What size population do you want? And how many generations would you like to run? Like, is it 50 generations, 100 generations? How many iterations do you want to uh, go through with that uh, size? So uh, here, what are first let me run because I often forget to run these lines. Okay, the population, we are generating random numbers between 0 to 256 of a size 3 NumPy array because RGB values, right? We'll later do two dimensions, in which case this is not 0 to 256, then it can be, I don't know, 256 by 256 by 256. That will take a long time, but I think I have done 16 by 16 by 256 just to prove the point. But anyway, in this case, it's just one uh, D vector. So let's just uh, generate like three values, RGB. That's it. And once you do that, now we are going to evolve the population. How are we going to evolve it? First, we have a function for evolve population. Let's run that then it gives you the evolved population and then we calculate the best fit and we take the minimum of the best fit and we are saying okay for this generation the best fit is this and print out the value very simple that's it now we are ready to run it so our target rgb is let's say red color as uh, the target which is basically 25500 and then let's do the simulation with how many with a population of 100, target RGB of this, and uh, 50 generations, 0.01 mutations, and 0.1 is our uh, our elite ratio. So with this, let's go ahead and run. This should be pretty fast, actually. There you go. Generation zero, the best fitness is 6.333. It already started off great. You see, 247, one, and zero, because we have the fitness in the beginning. Yeah, it already starts with a good selection of elites, and within that, because our goal is 255.00, you see how close this is to that. And as the iterations go by, you get closer and closer to 255.00, it's 248.11, which is okay. Let's run this one more time and see what happens. You see now it has a different starting point, 239.746. And then now after a few iterations, it came down to 256, 252.720. Yeah, so uh, if you if you do it for I don't know 100 iterations generations, you will get closer and closer and closer. That's uh, that's the that's the idea there. Okay, so there you go. I hope you got the idea. Now, if you if you wonder, is this really close or far? Let's go ahead and print both colors, 255 and the other one. That's exactly what this function is doing. So this is our target color. This is the camouflage color. Isn't that amazing? Let's do this exercise with something else. Let's do 255, 255, 0, and run the simulation. So this is how it started off with. And now let's go ahead and plot the colors so you can see how. So this is the target. That's the camouflage color. Isn't that amazing? Now let's do this in two dimension, OK? So we are almost done with the video, so I appreciate your patience. And I'm just extending the above to two dimensions. So running same fitness function, nothing different. It's just that our arrays are going to be two-dimensional arrays. That's the only thing. Evolved population is going to be exactly the same, nothing different there. 
and uh, uh, simulate is going to be pretty much the same and the only thing is instead of 0 by 3 you have 16 by 16 by 3 that's the grid I chose to uh, you know uh, uh, simulate in this case uh, and yellow color I actually took like an African savanna thing and then and then you did the color picker and I got came up with this value 222 to uh, 165.33 I'm like okay let's use that and then let's see how uh, things evolve and our population size everything else I'm keeping it the same and this will take a little longer because we are not just doing one dimension we are doing uh, two dimensions 16 by 16 by 3 as you can see the fitness started off with 81 now we are going down after 50 generations uh, it's 42 the fitness and if you want to visualize how things happen again in notebook I didn't want to spend time trying to figure out how to create an animated video but we can plot individual grids images of each each uh, of each uh, generation so generation one generation two generation three most of them are probably eaten by lion now as most of the red blues greens are being eaten by lions and whatnot then as the generations go by the only thing that are left out are the ones that are blending into the yellowish color in the African savanna background and as you see as I go down it's going getting more and more yellow uh, yellow here I see more yellows than greens but if you go back here it's completely random so I I hope this makes sense and again this is uh, this is my way of uh, explaining what genetic algorithms are and how it is related to this this uh, evolution and camouflage as an example and in the next video let's actually take a uh, an a you know let's actually code a genetic algorithm ourselves and uh, and uh, and and work on a problem and after that I'll also introduce you to a couple of libraries maybe that uh, where you don't have to code you just call the library and then you use uh, use them for optimizing your fitness function or objective function whatever you want to call it I hope you really like this type of content and please keep requesting in terms of what you want to hear from me and if I have the skills to uh, learn that topic and digest it for you guys I'll do exactly what I'm doing right now I recently I mean I've done genetic algorithms a long time ago uh, before all of these advancements and now I'm redoing this you know and 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 it's it's amazing I'm learning a lot of a lot of a uh, uh, lot of stuff I mean I used to do this using Fortran programming again I'm extending the video but I used to do this using Fortran programming and it used to take a lot of time and computers were I'm talking about 1995 96 97 guys okay most of you are probably younger than that now you have amazing Python libraries ready uh, to use and it's a shame if you can't if you use it that's my goal make sure you know how to code in Python and use tools like these for your specific problems okay now I should just keep quiet and wait until the next video thank you keep liking these videos and I'll see you in the next tutorial